So I'm Ram. Uh, I've been working with NADN for three years now. Um, and for almost as long, <laughs> I've wanted more insight into uh, the, the, the environments that I'm managing because I, I am an independent consultant and I work with a lot of clients. So a lot of different environments and a lot of different workflows. And over the years, of course, yeah, they have a lot of workflows that, that you need to manage. And then you can, can get questions for, for example, um, we see this webhook is listed somewhere, which an identity flow is doing something with that. Good luck finding that with 200 workloads. Or if you have credentials, where are they used? Um, so I created a dashboard. We sync all the data from NADN. Um, so the workflows and executions. This is the first alpha version. So not all the features are actually in here. I actually broke a couple of features while I was reworking some stuff. If you're a developer, you know how that goes. Um, so this is what there is now. And this thing has two environments in it already at this moment. So it's uh, my own environment that I use for all kinds of things, mostly um, <laughs> community uh, support, where I just create a workflow and do something so I can help someone. That's why they are all called uh, my workflow. Um, and one that I created speci specifically for uh, this demo. So there's two uh, environments uh, doing different things. I added um, folders because we all want folders. Um, this also includes the projects, which is an enterprise feature. So for example, this uh, cats and dogs and super secret project, um, those are projects. Uh, but within those, um, we have folders as well. So you can have all kinds of uh, folder structures and whatever you want, which is quite nice if you have over 50 workflows or, or, or something like that. Of course, if you have a small set, then it's fine. Um, so you can manage that. Nice dog. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, for example, for the webhooks, uh, you can just uh, look at all the webhooks that are here. Um, uh, there's a little bit of a performance thing that I still need to fix, but sure. Uh, you can, of course, link towards the, the workflow that uh, has the stuff inside. And you can search for the webhook path. So, for example, if some kind of system has a webhook listed, you can just put in the path and you know exactly um, which workflows are actually using that path or at least workflow, because of course you can only have one per path if you have it active. Um, same for credentials. So here you see all the credentials that are listed within my um, application or my NNN instance. So for example, a Moneybird, which is my uh, financial thing. You can see all the workflows that I use my Moneybird node in. Um, there's a bit of funky stuff going on as well because I changed something in my environment and I broke all my stuff. So that's why it's not <laughs> all filled. Um, and you can, of course, link towards uh, whatever you want. And there's also a search where you can search for certain settings. So if you have, uh, the, those are the workflow settings. So for example, the execution order or the time zone. So you can search where, where they are set. So you can change something if, if, if needed. Um, if you search for a node, you can also do that. So for example, if there's a breaking change with a certain node and a certain node version, you can also just do that. So for example, MySQL, so you know there's a breaking change in 2.1 and you need to update or whatever, then you can just search them and uh, find them. Of course, I don't have any of version 2.1. There we go. So there's a couple of flows with that. Across all your instances. Yes. Um, here you have the option to include all folders, uh, which is also the instances. So a folder is actually also an instance, or an instance is also a folder. So you could uh, all folders or not. 
this thing doesn't actually work at the moment, but it <laughs> needs to be implemented. And also include filters that are on the bottom left here. There's more to come, of course. This is something I broke, and yeah, there's only one filter left. Uh, so those kinds of things you can all put together. And of course, you can also just search for all versions. Um, and then you see all the workflows with that node, which can be uh, quite handy. Also, if you are searching for a certain node parameter, you can just search for that. I had a question of a client of mine where they asked, like, we, we are receiving an email from NADN because there was the NADN line under the email, but they had no idea which workflow of the 230 workflows was sending that. Good luck finding that. Uh, at that point, I did have the node function to search for a node, so I could at least search for the workflows with that node and, and find like 20 workflows where I could just search. Um, but that also gave me the idea to just search for all the parameters. So all the parameters are in here, uh, and you can search them all. Um, you will also get a list of the parameters uh, that are actually used, and then of course the value, which is Quite handy, of course. Um, and also a nice thing is the executions. Um, this is not fully fledged yet uh, because I broke some stuff, of course, because I do. Um, but this does help you with finding out uh, what's going on. Uh, so this is over time. So each day, what is going on. So also if you are successful, then you see yeah, there's a lot of uh, things. Of course, the successful ones aren't that uh, very useful. Uh, so you go for the field, and then you see how many there are failing. And also per workflow. Of course, we're also going to add the time and duration uh, of a workflow. One of the things I also <laughs> have from experience is that there is a webhook or a trigger node running, which uh, is fired every what is it, minute or, or whatever, or whenever something changes. Um, so then there is a long list of executions, but there is a filter within that workflow that if something is the case, then the workflow is actually executed. Uh, so then you are searching in the list of executions where they are all like 0 0.1 seconds, but there's one that's 10 seconds, and you want that. You can also search for that. So you can just search for the duration limit. In this case, there's only one workflow that actually has any in it. Of course, this data is just demo data and stuff, so there's not actually anything uh, useful going on. So um, big bar of 187, that's uh, quite a lot, but that's because of the demo. Um, but it's easy just to find which workflows those are, and you can then just link to, to the workflow that, uh, that you're looking for. Uh, also with the date range and stuff like that. And of course, a lot more to come, like the dashboard. Uh, it's grayed out now because I've not started working on it yet. But then you get one overview of all your instances um, to know uh, where you have to take action. For example, if, if stuff is failing or uh, something takes more time than on average, uh, I can put all that stuff in the dashboard and then you can act on that and you have one place to, to look at that. And especially for me as a consultant for a lot of different clients, it's nice to have all that in one dashboard and then yeah, you only need one place to look, which is uh, quite handy. Of course, I made it for myself. Um, <laughs> of course, you can also use it. Um, it is actually already live on Docker Hub. Uh, so you can install it. The documentation is uh, not really there. Um, there's a little uh, description on how to do it. Uh, it will run for uh, the, the rest of the year. Uh, there is going to be some kind of pricing on it. I'm not sure yet. But the rest of the year you can just use it, uh, whatever you want. Um, and then, uh, <coughs> yeah. Are there any questions? Oh dear. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So one of the things I was uh, wondering about is, like, and I sort of get that from your last sentence. Like, are you planning to offer it as a SaaS or anything like that? That's a good question. Um, it's not going to be a SaaS offering. Uh, it's going to be self-hosted because I think that a lot of 
people also use NADM because they can self-host and then it makes no sense to offer it as a SaaS. Uh, so it's all self-hosted. It's, it's in, in two Docker images, one for the sync and one for the actual uh, application. Yeah. So you could actually, uh, for my uh, case and for yours as well, have one central instance and then have a sync uh, container on every server of the, the, the clients, for example, and those push it to your central instance. So security-wise, flexibility-wise, that's all uh, a lot easier to manage. That's also why I split them out, of course. And then you can select which one to sync at that point, of course. Cool. Thank you. Yes? I'm uh, new into uh, uh, N8N. Uh, you're exploring the metadata APIs. Is there any limitation when you... Um, I'm not exploring any APIs at the moment. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm reading a database. Um, so there will be some APIs involved in the, in the future when we're starting to do stuff with NADM. Uh, but at this point, I'm just reading. So I can just read the data and I'm not going to write to the database, or at least I'm not planning to, because that yeah, can cause issues. Um, so the API will be added later. Uh, and then yeah, it depends on what the API <laughs> is able to do. Uh, for, for the plans I have now, the API is fine to do uh, what I want to do, which is, for example, copying a workflow, uh, changing the credentials, stuff like that. So basic stuff. Uh, that's already possible. So For the private environment, but in case your customers are in a hosted environment, yeah. are you also still able to... Yeah, so for now, it's just for the self-hosted environments because I had to make a choice. Um, I will probably also add something to, to get cloud involved in there because, of course, there are people in the cloud which can uh, use it. What I see with my clients is that they are all self-hosted, also because I manage their self-hosted servers. <laughs> bit of my own fault. Um, but, yeah, as, as it, at some point, uh, there will also be uh, just the extraction with just the APIs and stuff like that for, for clients. Are you also able to... Uh make an interface between different private clouds of NADN? Or is it just one instance, one environment where you're retrieving all the data? No, no, no. Uh, you can put as many environments in there as, as you want. Okay. Uh, I did not show it, but here you have it. So there's two the environments in here right now. Uh, this, of course, is not the prettiest uh, screen like all the other <coughs> stuff. Uh, but there's two environments. You can just add the environments as you want. And the sync image can be put on the server uh, that, that you're extracting the data from. So you can yeah, make that uh, separate as well. Any other questions? Where can people find it? Yeah, girl. <coughs> that was a bit slow. Um, so there's two images, the, the base image, so without a sync is the most important one. This will also do the database migrations, database setup for my macro itself. The only thing uh, that you need to do is uh, put in these variables, which is basically just a Postgres database where you connect to, because of course this application also needs a database. It's not directly reading from an ADN when you are browsing the, the site, so it's all synced. Um, so these are the only environment variables you need uh, and you can just run it um, and then for the sync uh, yeah, it of course needs to be able to access the server it's extracting data for and you can actually uh, set a specific environment um, so if you have this sync inside a, a environment uh, server cluster or whatever where you have NADN, you can uh, sync it from there to a central location if you want. And otherwise, it will just loop through all the environments that are available. But the documentation will come uh, soon ish. <laughs> ish. Nothing else? Cool. We have time for another question. That's a question for what? Yeah, we can do one more. Yeah, I think you answered a bunch of them here, but uh, it's, so it, it sounds like, and I'm new to NADM, so I don't understand the architecture or how it's set up. It sounds like NADM uses a database to store the workflow designs and running instances and all yeah. the runtime data, everything, and you're just reading that. Yeah. 
Is there anything that you need to do to instrument the workflow design itself? Like um, if you want to do something mid-flow, raise a flag, set a kind of a milestone, do you have any kind of instrumentation inside the workflow or it's only just reading the database? At this point, it's just reading the database. And I will also uh, add some, some options to read specific parts of a database that you can search for a certain uh, flow, for example, if, uh, if the workflow actually passed a certain point or whatever. Um, but that's also, that's just the analysis of the execution then. So I'm not injecting anything into the workflow. Uh, there will be some workflow modification options in the future at some point, but that's mostly to uh, go from dev to prod or, or something like that. So you can easily move between uh, stuff. Uh, those kinds of functions are coming at some point. Um, but what it does, it, it syncs the data and it also processes it because the database that NADN has, um, it has all the data, but for viewing something like this, it's not really that usable directly because it's mostly big uh, blocks of text because it's all JSON based. And of course, and then it works very well and very fast and very smooth. But if you want to get insight into it, then it gets tricky because then you have to analyze the data. And that part of analyzing it, that's what the synchronization is doing. And then you have a database that you can actually read and do something with. Any other? All right, we had one. Uh... Some more questions, let's do it afterwards. So we can move on now. Perfect.